Great, we have a working program now and we added every feature that we wanted. The only, the only problem now with the program is that the output is not very user friendly. Uh, with that, I mean, you know, uh, let's say yes here. Uh, so the, this is the output and you get a list here. So it's a Python list. And uh, what we want to do instead is uh, we want to show each of these lines in one separate line in the terminal. So that output will be more readable to the human eye. And let's go ahead and do that. So how can we implement such a thing? So this output now is a list object, uh, which means that uh, the, uh, the call here, the function call, this produces this list object. And so what can we do is we could uh, maybe iterate through this list object. You know, something like we can store the list object in a variable, so out output will be assigned this list. And then what you can do is you can say for item in the list, in the output list, print out the item. Let's save this and try out. We're going to have an issue here, but one step at a time. Enter I, uh, Y, yes, Y. And so this is what I wanted to have. So the first definition, precipitation in the form of liquid water goes in the first line and the second definition to fall from the clouds in drops of water goes to the second line. So that's good. However, we should keep in mind that our program does not produce only the list, but sometimes it produces strings as well. Uh, so such as this one in here. Uh, no, I didn't mean that. Anyway, uh, so this is what you get and you don't want that. This is a message saying that the word doesn't exist. So what the program is uh, doing, what Python is doing is it, it, it is iterating through all every type of output that the function generates. So our function generates a list sometimes and sometimes it generates a string. Uh, how can we fix that? So we have a list and a string. Uh, let's think of a difference. How can we discriminate a list from a string? What's the difference between a list and a string? Well, the, the difference is clearly a data type. A list is a list object and a, and a string is a string object. So how about implementing a conditional here? Which says something like this. If type of output is a list, then indent this with four spaces and that one as well. So this loop now is nested inside that conditional and will be executed only when this evaluates to true. So only when we have, uh, when we get returned a list from the program. So else, if it's not a list, it has to be a string. So in that case, we want to print out the output without iterating through it. So let me check. And we get the output correctly this time. The message, the word doesn't exist. Please double check it. Uh, let's check uh, another time with a correct word. And we get the correct definitions in there. Let's try another word, mathematics. And this time uh, the mathematics word has only one definition, so we get the definition printed out in here. So it's a science. Let's try the other scenario as well, rain. Um, did you mean rain? No. The word doesn't exist, please double check it. So we got this line here executed. So yeah, this is the complete code. And I think we can consider our program complete now. So that's what I thought of adding to the program. Now the program is quite user friendly and we are considering many scenarios there that the user may input to the program.
However, the interface is still a command line interface, so it's not a desktop graphical program and it's not a web application. The interface is a command line, so you send input through the command line and you get output through the command line. And what I'm trying to say is that you can actually extend this program um, so that you can uh, transform it into a web application where the user, instead of entering the input through the command line, they can enter input through a, a web page. So through a live website, they can enter input, push a button, and then get the output dynamically on the HTML web page. So that is possible with Python, uh, but you're still not ready to do that. Uh, because we have quite a few more sections to go. We have some applications where, where I'll teach you how to develop web applications with Python. And after that, you can go back to this code and extend it and create a, gra a, a web interface. And also you'll be able to create a desktop graphical uh, user interface with the knowledge that you'll gain through these sections because we're also covering graphical user interfaces in the course. And also, we are also covering databases. So why I'm mentioning databases? Well, because in this program, we're using this file where to store our data set. The problem with this is that if this gets too big, for, for now, this is just five megabytes, oh, well, that's good. But if the, the file gets too big, then you need to load the file in Python every time you, you execute the script. Like here, we are loading the file into the Python session when you execute the script. Now, if the file is too big, that will be very costly in, in terms of time. So what you want to do instead, you want to use a database, maybe. With a database, what happens is that you, you make a query to the database and instead of getting the entire data set, uh, you actually get only that row or that value which you queried for. So databases are very efficient and we'll cover databases later in the course. And so after a few sections, I'll get back to this program. I'll, I'll give it to you as an exercise so that you can extend it by creating a inter an interface, a graphical interface for that, or a web interface. And also I'll give you access to a database where you can query data for this program so that it becomes a real robust with a very friendly user interface. So I hope you like the idea and I hope you are enjoying the course. And yeah, let's move on with some more uh, sections. I'll see you later. Bye.